Um, let's let's play this Joe Manchin because this is also interesting, and then we'll then we'll wrap it up. Uh, forgive me, folks, but here's Joe Manchin basically announcing, um, in the event that the Democrats take the Senate, I want you to know that I'm going to be the guy who's going to be on TV every single weekend because I'm going to put myself right in the center of this entire thing. And this is how he's going to do it. I know we're important to some, not all, but some in the Democratic Party. And you've made this clear the last 24 hours so we can run down this pretty quickly. Ending the filibuster. Yeah, we're not going to, I'm not going to vote for that. So I'm trying to lay, lay to rest the fears that people are using now and scare tactics in Georgia. You've I am fucking useless. Candace running in Georgia. Two Democrat candidates who are truly qualified and want, they understand Georgia, they want to work with it. And you've got two Republican uh, senators that are, uh, you know, going for re-election. With that being said, don't throw this fear tactic in that if you vote for the Democrats, we're going to throw this in the chaos and it's going to be a socialist type of administration within uh, Congress. That's not going to happen because the simple truth is it'll be a 50-50 tie. And a 50-50 tie means that the vice president would vote to break the tie and it would lean towards the Democrats. But there has to be a tie. So I'm not voting for the things you've talked about. I'm not voting for, for basically breaking the filibuster because that means that we've given up on the Senate. It's supposed to work in a bipartisan way. Because that means that. I'll get what about less attention. DC statehood? Well, first of all, let me just go with packing the courts. I'm not voting for that. That's what they're looking for right now. They're looking for basically, okay, are you going to stack the courts? No, I'm not. I'm not going to vote for that. That means there's no tie. The D.C. statehood, I don't see the need for the D.C. statehood with the type of services that we're getting in D.C. right now. Who are you? Uh, we have representation. They say no vote you know, without representation. Statehood? They have uh, no voice, but they do. I'd have to hear more of that, but right now I'm not convinced that's the way to go. You're Puerto Rico. Okay. All right. Still so not convinced that. All right. So, all right. Let's just break this down. Now, let me, let me just do the most generous, the most generous take I can take on this. 50-50, this is the situation. Without a doubt, it is helpful in Georgia to try and take that talking, uh, uh, talking point off the table, right? That, that voting for Warnick and voting for Ossoff is going to mean a Supreme Court, you're going to lose all the, the Supreme Court and this and that. I would prefer to, to get to neutralize that talking point without somebody pledging that they were going to do something they weren't going to do. Wait, wait, um, Sam, I don't buy that. I don't think that voters are voting on that. I don't think voters go to the polls and say, well, you know, I'm voting on the filibuster right now. Well, well, well but you don't think you don't think uh, evangelicals vote on the idea that they're going to lose abortion rights. I mean, they're going to lose the ability to shut down already. We already lost that fight. We're not in that fight. Anymore. No, no, no. But I'm saying on the right. Yeah, on the like, right. Yeah. I mean, but they're not going to, we're not going to win their vote anyways. So no, no, no. Well, no, no, no. To. It's not a question of winning their vote. It's a question of, this is all about turning out. Motivating right? them. The special they're election. Tur- they always turn out. They're the highest turnout. Concept. What are you talking about? This is the Republican base. They always turn out. Well, I, I mean. Who are I, we trying to speak to here? Oh, I think we're trying to neutralize one of the talking points that they're going to use in this election. I think this but, is fundamentally what's wrong with the Democratic Party. Well, hold on. They're trying just, to like my, neutralize most, conservatives. This is my most uh, <laughs> uh, generous take. And let me finish my generous fight, take. Okay? I'm, well, I'm trying to be generous here. I mean, this is the generous version. He hedges on D.C. statehood. He says, I don't see it right now, as opposed to like, I'm not going to vote for filibuster. I'm not going to vote at 50-50 it's much harder for the Democrats, a guy like Joe Manchin or others to vote. Like, you know, it's 56, 50, they're going to vote for it. They're going to do the core packing like 50, 50. It's tough, but here's the thing. He's hedging on DC statehood and you get in DC statehood. All of a sudden it's 52, 50 with Joe Manchin. We don't need him anymore. Yeah, well, that's he like, doesn't get the, to do this masturbatory exercise where he's at the center of attention. That's my generous take on it. And and frankly, like, I'm okay with him saying that. If it could get, if it could, if it can get you a single point in Georgia, I'm okay with him saying that if he does the DC statehood after the fact, because then we don't need Joe Manchin and he can keep his, his promise to, you know, whoever it is. He doesn't need to, but yeah. um I mean, I think, look, it's equivalent to me, which I also think was a mistake, but think about Doug Jones, Roy Moore. Yeah. Al Franken left the Senate. 
because he didn't want people to be able to say, um, well, uh, you're telling me not to vote for Roy Moore because he's some type of creep. What about Al Franken? Why aren't you policing your own? And that's why he left. I mean, that is why he left. And I, I think it was a calculation he didn't have to make. I think if, if it was, I don't know, hypothetical me, I might have waited for a, a Senate ethics investigation. But Franken did it for that reason. Whether it, it worked or didn't work, I mean, we, we, you know, how do we disaggregate that? We, you know, we know Jones won that time. We know he lost this time. Uh, but Roy Moore was a pretty creepy guy. I think the idea of th this race, again, like if we got to rely on Joe Manchin to be the guy to get us the uh, get rid of the filibuster and the uh, and, and expand the court, we're SOL, uh, SOL anyways. And and so the idea that he would say, like, uh, but I'm open to D.C. statehood, which I think like that's what I'm hearing there. He's like, I don't, when you say like right now, I don't know. It seems like they have enough services. I don't know about that. Um, there is, is that response though. They have enough services. <laughs> well, that's my point is that he's, he's hedging on that. That's a hedge. Yeah. But, and, but when you're saying like, he's not, listen, he's not, Joe Manchin's not going to swing any of these elections. I understand that he doesn't want the messages to be repeated and, you know, whatever he says to have legs and used against anybody in, in Georgia. But if it is specifically about Georgia, I don't think any of those issues are really, I, I will say it. Who are you trying to win over? People are trying to win over. I don't People think you're trying, trying to win to over anybody. I think you're trying to, to, to not motivate as much of a turnout. I mean, look, Yeah. here's the thing. They're One quarter <laughs> of the voters for Trump in 2016 came out because of that empty seat uh, that, 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 that uh, uh, the, uh, the Merrick Garland seat. Yeah. And this is the reverse, right? Like we're going to take back the Supreme court. If you elect these two guys in there, right. You're not going to get any benefit out of Amy Coney Barrett. That's the message that right. Loeffler and Purdue are going to say, there's no doubt about it. And, um, what Manchin does is give space for those two candidates to say, you know, to say that's not the case. We already know, you know, like, I don't know if there's a debate, I can assure you that that what Joe Manchin says is going to come up in that debate. Well, the, the, the people that are going to be depressed, what I'm trying to say is like the, 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 the evangelicals are, they're very loyal voters. They will turn out. The ones that are going to be depressed are the, the, the the mythical like centrist republicans that you know that, that's that's who's depressed i don't know it's it's i just i just don't buy this being like a, a great strategy for democrats and it could come back and bite them in well, the i don't think it's later, a strategy but... for democrats i think mansion also has a huge benefit that he gets out of it because he's already laid the marker yeah. that you're gonna have to come to me i'm gonna yeah. be the kingmaker yes yes now, that's that's it that's it oh yeah man, this no, no, man no. this man like you said emma his ego <laughs> exactly it's like i'm the guy who we're going to talk to every Sunday. I'm going to be on every Sunday talking show because I've now positioned myself as the guy who gets to decide whether we get rid of uh, the filibuster or whether we expand the court or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, Susan Collins is a little bit more humble when she does it. Right. <laughs> no, yeah. Mansion get, and they're like BFFs, the two of them, like two peas in the pod. They, they're, they're like vampires, except they feed off cable hits. That's what sustains them. <laughs> it's the, the concept of, I mean, I think in Manchin's mind, he wants one person to win because then the, you've got the gang of two, right? Like, you know, like, honestly, like that Manchin Collins, they're going to be the ones who get to dictate everything. And that's what they want. It's, it's so hard for normal people, I think, to conceive of how much of these decisions that impact the lives of millions of millions of people, like years of, 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 of suffering or immiseration or anxiety could be washed away. And it's all just a function of the ego of one or two a-holes. I it. mean, it's just, it's beyond, I think like a rational human being's conception of this. Yeah, yeah they want like Collins and Mansion buddy cop forever and ever. I mean, I don't know. That's, that's the vibe I get. But that's how like great civilizations collapse. It always comes down to some Achilles heel ego issue. No, it's don't worry. We're already on our way. Uh, we but, are, but I was just going to say, let's wrap up by saying folks, and if you want color commentary for the complete de degradation and dissolution of this uh, society and empire, stick around here. We'll be here every day at noon. <laughs>